Hello and thanks for joining me once again. Today I'm going to be starting a little new art journal just to keep together a few ideas for different techniques uh, to put in my finished artworks. Techniques, subjects, colours, just a little air bon moi really. Um, and so I've bought this new little pad. Um, it's from the Pig Pink, Pink Pig Company. Um, so if you look out for this little pig that's on all their pads and they're, they're a local company, they're based in Huddersfield in Yorkshire and they have really nice heavy papers. I've not used this one before but I use the watercolour one quite often. Um, so if you look out, like I say, for the pigs, they'll always be in the cover. Um, and it's, it's a really nice paper that and I went for the pink because I love pink. So just a little pad um, and just like I say keep some ideas together and I've just popped a bull, bulldog clip on the end there I don't know if you can see that uh, just to keep the pages together so when I add some water to that it's not going to warp too much uh, and I've popped the date on as well just so that I can keep a record of what I've been doing. So I've just done a very quick sketch of this horse um, not worrying too much about accuracy just getting something on the page really to work round. Um, if you're not very confident about working straight in ink, of course you can do a little sketching pencil, put the ink over the top and then rub out your pencil lines. I work using a dip pen. Sometimes I make my own dip pens um, from sticks. I could do that in another, uh, another day, show you how I do those. But this is the dip pen I've used this morning. And I've used this calligraphy ink, which is a sepia one, Windsor and Newton. And the reason I've got that one is because it's light fast, so it's not going to fade over time. However, it's not water fast, it's water soluble, which sometimes that's quite nice to have a water soluble one because you can make the colours run when you want them to. And this is a lovely colour for horses, you find a lot of red comes out of that as well. Um, but sometimes you don't want it to run. So what I was thinking of, actually I might just let some of it run. Um, just pop a little bit of water on, just where... It's not, uh, it's not moving too much because it's nice and dry so it's not actually moving that much but it would do if you put a lot of a lot of water on it let's see if you can get it to no, so it's not moving so that's actually quite a good thing ok, so what I thought I would do just dry that off a bit is cover that in some gesso so that it doesn't lift when I start putting a lot more water on it so I can keep that sketch there. Okay, so this is the Jackson's um, gesso acrylic one. I won't tip it up too much because it's going to come out tumbling out if I do. And just um, I have these little cheap plastic spatulas that'll just... Uh, I'm just wondering, so this is, like I say, all experimenting to see if I can get that gesso on there without the ink lifting and still be able to see the picture through. I think it maybe is lifting a little bit. Perhaps put it on a bit thickly, maybe scrape some of it off. But we can still see See the sketch through there. Yeah, I quite like that actually. So just got this impression of the. I think it has lifted a little bit there where I put the mane, but I don't think it matters too much. We've still got that the movement in the mane there. I think the more you more, the more I go over the spatula, the more it's going to lift. So I think I perhaps just leave that to dry now. Okay, so I left that to dry for quite a while uh, and it's completely dry now, so I can work on top of it. It might look, it looks a bit of a mess at the moment, but it's done what I sort of wanted it to do in that I can still see the picture through the gesso and I know now that what's under there isn't going to lift anymore. It has lifted a little bit here, uh, but to be honest I don't actually mind that, that's where I've, I've scraped down with a spatula and it's given us a little bit of movement um, to that anyway. Perhaps another time I might thin that gesso. Um, with a little bit of water and put it on a bit more carefully with a brush so it doesn't lift the same and so we can see it through more but that's all part of the learning process I suppose um, so I don't really, I think I'm going to start doing something with the background now um, I was going to put a bit of this iridescent iridescent ink on 
But I think before I do that, I'll just wet the paper a little. Just use a nice big brush, I think. I'm just going to do the background and not the actual horse itself. So just wet around the horse. very roughly. I will speed this video up in places and edit it a little bit because uh, I'm sure to make mistakes and to take too much time over one or two jobs. So give it a really good shake. Again this is the one I used yesterday, um, the Shimmering Gold and it's the De La Rowney one. Whoops. Okay, so that's going in quite nicely into the water. I'm not sure whether to leave it like that or whether to brush, brush it in a little bit. Um, I think I'll just move it in a bit closer to the horse there. We'll give it a... So that gives a nice background. I think I might drop some yellow into that. Let's just imagine it's a nice sunny day um, and we've got some yellow in there. Just again seeing what the brush hole does with the iridescence, but you know I'm sure that's going to move quite nicely in there. Perhaps make it look as if the sun's coming from this direction and moving across. Yeah, I quite like that. I think in some areas I'm going to leave that just to diffuse itself and in others I'm going to actually paint it in. Yeah, quite like, quite like that. So for the horse itself, it's whether I put how much I do to it really. Um, thinking, I'm going to give this burnt sienna a try. I've not used it before. So this is burnt sienna, but in, to me in the pot it looks very, very red, very red. So I'll just mix a little bit on the plate. It is, it's really red on there. Perhaps not what I want for a horse, but let's go with it anyway. We can have a red horse, it doesn't matter, does it? lot more water in it though. Make it less dark. Again so we can still see through and see those pen lines coming through. Yeah an unusual, yeah it's not like uh, as I was imagining a burnt sienna to be really that but never mind.
as soon as you see it's actually um, very very easy to lift this brush o off the um, gesso much easier than it is lifting brush o off paper so that's um, one thing to remember really if you want to have that ability to be able to lift the brush o off it's br it's coming off quite well from the gesso I'm just uh, wondering whether to put some extra colour into the mane um, to pick up the movement or just to leave it like that. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do too much more to that actually. I think uh, what I was set out to find out was how well the ink showed through the gesso so that you could work on it without moving that ink below uh, and that's worked well. I think if I did it another time I would use a thinner gesso so that the ink showed through even more. Um, and I would probably use my paint more thinly as well so that I'd still got those nice lines there because um, you know they, they gave a lot of movement though these lines going this way although close up we've still got that direction going that way and it looks quite like you know as if we've got quite a bit of movement going on. Um, I like the iridescence the way it's gone into the background into this um, just, um, brush hole here and I like the the smoothness of the um, gesso gives a good body to the horse actually it makes it gives it a bit of solidity so um, and where some of the granules have gone in there and it's reacted it gives you know the impression it could be a little bit dappled as well actually so that might be a good thing to use for a, a dappled horse I don't know if you can see just there um, I did a dappled horse once uh, for a commission using um, watercolour and I just used the salt technique that worked quite well for to give a dappled effect but yeah um, I'm quite happy with the, the way that's worked so I would use that technique again um, using that nice calligraphy ink okay uh, again thanks for watching and I'll put all the materials I used down at the bottom and if you have any questions please ask thank you